Hi, my name is Sasha and today we'll have a deep look on one of the most iconic chorus in the history of electric instruments, the Boss CE2. So first of all, uh, let's talk about the chorus. The chorus was just a button on the Hammond, old Hammond organs. It was called Celeste or something like that, but the very first chorus that we saw in the history of electric music, it was inside the Roland JC120 combo amplifier. It was a section of the amp and it was the first chorus effect. It was uh, so good that uh, people bought a lot of uh, jazz chorus because it was uh, cheaper, it was a transistor and it sounds great and it has a chorus. So after one year that Jets Chorus was on the market, it was 1975. In 1976, the year that I was born, Roland decided to put on the market the Boss CE1, which was by the way the first chorus pedal, but it was huge and it wasn't designed for guitar. It was a uh, low impedance uh, pedal, it has a level control because maybe people used with uh, keyboards or guitars, basses and so on, so it was a multi-purpose pedal and it has uh, some fancy stuff uh, like the AC cord and the on off button which doesn't enable the effect, it just uh, shut down the <laughs> entire pedal. So it was uh, big, it was very big but it was super good and it still it is. In 1979 Roland decided to put the Boss pedals on the market and in the first line of Boss pedals we have the Boss CE2 which by the way if you never saw it is this one. The Boss CE2 is a compact version of the Boss CE1. It doesn't have all the stuff, it doesn't have a stereo output, it doesn't have the vibrato effect, doesn't have the level control and it seems that it doesn't have the intensity knob but it has a high impedance input so it's great for guitar it's made for electric guitar it's a super compact it's a boss pedal like every boss pedal they are sturdy they are reliable and they are easy to put on your pedal board we can find on the market three different boss ce2 the first one which has been produced between the 79 and the 84 it's made in japan and it's called black label why that? Because it has a black label on the back. You see it? It has a black label. Then from 1984 to 1988 we got the green label made in Japan version. And from 88 to 91 and some people say 92 we got the made in Taiwan version which I have another one which is this one. It's a green label, but it's made in Taiwan. One thing you have to know, these Boss pedals are designed to be used with ACA Boss adapters, which are 12 volts. And if you use a 9 volt DC adapter, it doesn't work great. You see, you get a very soft light here and sometimes is pulsing. It's not good, it's not the best option. But if you don't have an ACA Boss adapter, you can use a daisy chain and connect the CE2 to a 9 volt adapter and another pedal and this will fix the issue. Or if you are good with circuit boards, you can just clip off a couple of diodes and then it will work great with a simple 
9 volt single adapter. You can find the mod on the interweb. It's easy to find and it's easy to do. If you don't have a daisy chain and you have a multi power supply, like for example the DC brick that doesn't have isolated outputs, you can use it with that and it will work because they are not isolated. If you have isolated output transformers, it will not work. Another thing that you have to know is that inside we got an internal trimmer which is the intensity knob on the Boss CE1 but I'll show you in a minute. So let's go down and have a quick look of the outside and the inside of this marvelous Chorus the Boss C2. Let's go down to the table. So here's our Boss Chorus CE2. That easy. One input high impedance, one output, so no stereo output as the CE1. Rate which controls the speed, depth, which is self-explanatory. And then we got the on-off LED as every BOSS pedal. Please notice this sticker, it says use BOSS ACA adapters only but we don't have any more. <laughs> On the back we got the black label made in Japan, so it's the first run, it's uh, from uh, 1979 to 1984. Let's see what we got inside. And this is our circuit, two things very important, the core of our CE2 and many others chorus from the 70s, 80s era are these two chips, Bucket Brigade devices MN3101 and the MN3007. These two tiny little guys are the ones that makes the difference inside all this stuff. The other thing is this trimmer. This acts exactly like an intensity knob. You can rotate it minimum, maximum and choose your intensity, not yours, the chorus one. By the way, I've cracked the input jack, so this is uh, another one, it's a new one. And that's it, the chorus CE1. So I want to make you hear how does it sounds. I will use the internal trim at about halfway and to the max so that you can understand the difference. Let's go and play some stuff.
Well, what else could I say? I got the Boss C2 since, I don't know, early 2000s and I've tried many chorus in my life but still this one is the best for me. It's not that the other ones are not good but this one is super juicy. It's got the sound. The modulation is rich, is intense. It's simply different. Very often I found the other choruses too thin. They have a thinner sound. This one is a super heavy sound and I like that. Distorted and clean. It's perfect. And I'm not the only one who thinks that because, for example, Robert Smith used it for a very long time. He did a career around the Boss CE2, but Johnny Marr too used the, the Boss CE2 as well as uh, Kim Tile from Soundgarden in the Super Unknown era. And accidentally, Super Unknown is one of my favorite records of all the time. And then we got uh, David Gilmour, everyone knows that, or maybe not, I don't know, but I knew since a long time. I like it so much that I have two, and so you get an idea. So, today it's over. We finished, I hope you enjoyed my video, subscribe to my channel because it's a new channel, or at least uh, today in uh, June 22 it's a new channel and uh, click the bell as usual. Thank you so much and see you next time.